Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and today we're answering your questions about stroke risk and transcatheter aortic valve replacement. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Isaac George, who's the Surgical Director of Structural Heart Disease at New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. During his fantastic career, Dr. George has performed over 10,000 cardiac procedures and more than 6,000 TAVRs. Dr. George, it is great to see you and thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, Adam. Great to be here. Thanks uh, for having me on and great to see you. Yeah, so Dr. George, before we get to the patient's question, I wanna to talk to you about your specialty there at New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York, which is TAVR. Can you share with the patients why this has become such an important part of your practice? So TAVR has really been an important part of my practice, my philosophy, my, my education here. I started out as, an, as a cardiac surgeon practicing open cardiac surgery, but I, I spent a lot of time as TAVR was evolving, going into the depths and the expertise in structural heart disease, specifically transcatheter heart valves. It was a blooming field at the time, and I've really devoted myself to learning all of these techniques so I can understand each patient separately, understand what's important for them, and be able to use all of these therapies to make the best decision for any individual patient. That can include open cardiac surgery. That can include transcatheter valve. It can include a mix and match of both of them. Some patients can get surgery and then get TAVR. Some patients can get TAVR and then get surgery. All of these are tools that we use as physicians to hopefully make the best decisions to treat patients over their lifetime. Dr. George, I loved your utility of shared decision-making, uh, the mix and match and tailoring procedures over a patient's lifetime. And now let's get to the patient's question. And this comes in from Deb. She asks, I'm looking into TAVR, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, and recently learned about an FDA approved system to use when placing a TAVR to prevent plaque from breaking off, traveling to the brain, and causing a stroke. It is called Sentinel Cerebral Protection System. Are any physicians you know using the Sentinel while implanting a TAVR aortic valve? Deb hits it right on the button. We have about 20% of uh, operators and centers in the United States right now using the Sentinel Cerebral Filter Protection Device. This is a filter that's inserted in the right radial artery at the time of TAVR and removed at the end of the procedure. In theory, it has two baskets that collect any debris that's liberated during the time of TAVR. Stroke is a persistent issue in TAVR. You know, calcium can break off at multiple time points during the procedure. That stroke rate is still between 1.5 to 2, 2.5%, regardless of what we've done, better devices, more experience. And so it's a fixed commodity in terms of this procedure. And that's why it's such a big deal. We can't predict it well. We clearly know that patients that have more calcium have a higher risk of stroke. We also know that almost 100% of patients who undergo TAVR have liberated calcium and debris that go up to the brain. That's found on MRI and other imaging studies in patients in clinical trials. The Sentinel filter is a device, again, that's been used to reduce the volume of those debris that go up to the brain. And there are a lot of theoretical benefits, potentially a lower stroke rate when you look at pooled studies together. It can maybe decrease the risk of future stroke and the risk of uh, cognitive decline. But in conclusion, we do use the filter here at our center. We use it on almost every case if the anatomy is usable. Dr. George, thanks for sharing that information about the Sentinel. One question I'm sure patients are wondering with only a 20% utility of the device, why are more centers using it to help patients? There are a few reasons, Adam. You know, the first is cost. It does cost extra to use the device. There are some reimbursement um, add-ons that help mitigate that cost. However, it doesn't fully, uh, you know, change that. Um, we're going to see more conclusive evidence because the second reason is that we don't have conclusive evidence that it reduces stroke. Stroke is a very challenging thing to study in clinical trials. One, you have to figure out who actually has a stroke and who doesn't. So it requires specific neurologists and experts to come and, you know, evaluate patients. It also requires very expensive imaging tests such as MRIs and CT scans. The next set of data that's going to be coming out at TCT 2022 
will be the Protect TAVR trial, which aims to definitively show that cerebral protection filters reduce stroke. So we are very anxiously awaiting that study result. Dr. George, no doubt we will be looking forward to the results of that clinical trial. And on behalf of all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, thanks so much for taking time away from your busy practice there at New York Presbyterian Hospital and sharing this educational information about TAVR. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks very much, Adam. It's been a pleasure being on and uh, we look forward to the next time. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.